Hi, I'm Tim Weedrick, Section Chief of the North Dakota Department of Health Emergency Preparedness and Response Section. Thank you for attending this public information session about the North Dakota Public Health and Medical Disaster Response System. Joining me today is Julie Sickler. Julie is the Director of the Division of Public Health Preparedness and Response Division. Uh, Shyla Thorson is also with us, who's the Director of the Division of Hospital Preparedness and Response. Now, if you're having any technical difficulties with your web stream or your video conference, please call our technical support team at 888-813-5344. That's 888-813-5344. We'll be presenting an overview of the major components of the North Dakota Preparedness and Response System, and we'll be answering your questions in today's program and also give you an opportunity to make comments and recommend changes. In order to manage our time efficiently, we're asking that you hold your questions until the question and answer portion of the program. We have participants online through webcasting, video conferencing, and also teleconferencing. All of the video conference microphones are currently muted in our bridge and will remain muted until we begin the question and answer portion of the program. The webcast participants will be calling in their questions using an 800 number and will provide the phone number and more detailed instructions at the appropriate time. Now, let me begin by describing some of the major strategic approaches to the development of our system, including our use of a single statewide public health medical coalition, the use of command and control, and our standardized planning and response protocols. Let me, first of all, talk a little bit about the, the fact that we have assessed five major risks uh, within North Dakota, and this is throughout the state. Those risks uh, include natural hazards, uh, things like flood, uh, severe weather, uh, severe summer uh, weather, as severe winter weather as well, and then human pandemic outbreaks. Those are all the forms of natural disasters that we're concerned about. In addition to that, we have technological hazards such as chemical spills or uh, releases. We have radiological releases, uh, dam failures, transportation events, and supply chain distributions, uh, for example, if medical supplies are no longer available through the normal supply chain. So those are the type of technological hazards we have. Uh, there are also intentional threats when somebody's physically trying to do harm and intentionally trying to do harm. So those are nuclear, radiological, biological, chemical, and then also armed assault. So those are the types of hazards that we prepare ourselves for within North Dakota. Uh, those are the ones that we prioritize in terms of our all-hazards approach. Now, we have both urban and rural areas within our state, obviously, and uh, North Dakota is a very rural state compared to the rest of uh, many of the rest of the states within the nation. And one of the things that we're frequently asked is what are the differences within the state between the urban and the rural areas and then between the states? And I like to kind of categorize this as a, an aha versus an O. Oh. People expect these huge differences in terms of the response uh, categories, meaning an aha, uh, but it's really more of an O. Oh. It, it, these differences really between the urban areas and the rural areas are subtle differences. And what I mean by that is that we have the same all hazards approach within our state, drawing on all the resources throughout the state when we have large scale emergencies. And so the operational aspects might have some modifications if we're dealing in Fargo uh, that may be slightly different than if we're dealing uh, with ZAP North Dakota. Uh, but the business processes and the types of assets and the types of response personnel are all drawn from the same system in our approach. Uh, we also have a little bit of a subtle difference in terms of how we've approached things in our state. The typical emergency management mantra is that all emergencies are local, meaning that at a local level, a city level, you first of all exhaust all of those resources before you request assistance from the county, and then you re exhaust all of those resources before you request assistance from the state, and then you exhaust all of those resources before you request assistance from another state or the federal government. But very early on, 15 years ago, when we began doing the strategic planning for these processes in North Dakota, we took a team approach right from the very outset. And so for the public health and the medical components of these responses, we take issue. In fact, we've altered the mantra that all emergencies are local. We're basically for public health and medical saying all medical emergencies require team responses. And so we have a great history 
of collaboration across our state. Uh, we have a great history of collaboration between the public sector and the private sector, multiple uh, governmental jurisdictions coming together to assist, and we've leveraged that uh, by assigning specific response roles to all of those entities rather than going local jurisdiction first at a city level and then cascading up uh, to draw on those resources. Uh, and part of the reason that we do that is because we have a vast geographic area to cover. So our our assets are widely distributed against a very sparse population. And so as we have developed these systems, you'll see uh, during our conversation in the next few moments uh, that these assets are available statewide for use by local entities and state entities uh, and that we have developed truly a response team as part of this process. But I do want to have a little bit of conversation with you about the linkage about the emergency centers, uh, how the emergency operations centers link across all of these jurisdictions within our state uh, so that it does end up being a cohesive system. And so uh, to, to begin, uh, in terms of the state emergency operations center is the uh, agency that is responsible at the state of North Dakota uh, for coordinating all of the state agencies and uh, their stakeholders. So whether it's a law enforcement activity, whether it's National Guard, whether it's the public health and medical component, and many others, that is the focal point for the coordination. And as you uh, look to the right, the second yellow box, you'll see county emergency operations centers that are linked directly to the state emergency operations center. Now, for larger jurisdictions, uh, some of the examples like Bismarck and, and Fargo and others, there are also city emergency operations centers that are linked to that direction as well. In terms of the public health and the medical components, however, you're going to see that there's a functional area that the North Dakota Department of Health Operations Center leads. We're connected to and part of the overall emergency management system, but the leadership, the mission assignment, the coordination occurs at the State Emergency Operations Center. That's where the response objectives come from. And then for the public health and the medical component, they're executed by our department operations center that is in contact with, through an incident command system, the public health operations centers at a local level, and the hospital department operations centers. And they are linked back to the county emergency operations center. So the main point of this slide really is to explain that regardless where you're at within the emergency management system, whether you're looking at this from a functional level of public health and medical, or you're looking at it from a geographic political geographic uh, level of a city or a county or the state, it's one big circle. It is all interconnected. And that's how the communications flow. That's how the command and control uh, ends up flowing as well. And that's what builds a cohesive system. And something, quite frankly, that I believe is fairly unique in terms of how uh, our state has, has organized our responses and has uh, proven to be very beneficial as we've actually provided the responses in the past. The next component uh, that I'd like to uh, start to move to uh, is the command and control function. And for that portion, uh, Julie Sickler, the division director of the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Response Division, uh, will execute uh, that. And so let me uh, go ahead and uh, slide the information on over so that uh, Julie can control it. And uh, Julie, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon. Our command and control headquarters are here in Bismarck. Um, we are actually located at 1720 South Burlington. Um, and in this, uh, in our section, there are three divisions. And once again, um, we are located in, uh, on Burlington Avenue. Within our uh, offices, we have the Department Operations Center for the uh, North Dakota Department of Health. In our Operations Center, we have approximately 50 locations to accommodate individuals assisting with our emergencies at any time. We also have video conferencing available, teleconferencing available, and separate meeting rooms uh, to accommodate other activities that may be going on during that operation. 
Across the hall from our Department Operations Center is our Joint Information Center. This uh, room also can accommodate nine and has the same electronic and media capabilities as the Department Operations does, Center does here in our offices. One of the uh, capabilities in our Department Operations Center is our video distribution system. Uh, through this system, we are able to attend video conferencing. We are able to uh, monitor news uh, broadcasts and also collect other common data um, information without actually having to disturb anything else that's going on in the Department Operations Center at that time. Also in this facility, we have a very large training and media room. Um, this room can accommodate um, up to 80 people with tables and other configurations will increase or decrease that number. Once again, this room is fully functional with video conferencing, teleconferencing, and is set up to conduct uh, media briefings during an emergency that we may have um, in the state of North Dakota. We have several assets that are available to us for a forward operating base, as we refer to it. Um, these are medical assets, including the mobile medical unit, which is an eight-bed emergency room, all uh, enclosed and independent. We have tents to set up as uh, medical facilities, uh, fully operational, as well as other assets for uh, transportation and for volunteers who are assisting us. They're considered wraparound services uh, that we can also take care of the medical professionals that are assisting us during that response. There is a decon decontamination trailer um, that is also available to be used uh, at our forward or operating base uh, that can uh, decontaminate individuals and or patients if necessary. And all of this is housed in our 40,000 square foot warehouse um, it is part of the state medical cash that we have accumulated over the 15 years of this program. Um, there are uh, vehicles, trailers, and several medical supplies contained within the warehouse. All of these materials are palletized, standardized, um, in, a, in such a system that if we need to deploy these uh, assets out into the field, we can do that um, for quick response. Also a part of the state medical cache are several distribution trailers. These range anywhere from six foot to 53 foot. I can tell you that um, we do have seven 53 foot trailers actually pre-deployed out to the most populated communities in the state of North Dakota. Those trailers consist of state medical shelter, supplies, uh, personal protective equipment, and uh, evacuation equipment available to each one of those communities, once again, to shorten our response time. We also have two incident command trucks. These are um, considered a uh, incident command center and or mobile office on wheels. They have full communications. It considers a bathroom and some running water and um, are available for on-site incident command activities. Other tactical in in communications available to us are actual kits that we have set up with satellite communications. Um, in addition to the mobile and, and assets you're seeing here, we do have a uh, communications trailer um, with satellite capabilities, um, repeater, cell phone boosters, um, et cetera. Uh, these kits are once again in the warehouse and are available. There are seven of the actual mobile kits that include uh, satellite services, uh, internet connections, uh, uh, cellular phones, et cetera, that are available through your local public health agency. All right, thank you, Julie. Uh, Shyla Thorson, our director for the Division of Hospital Preparedness, will continue the presentation on the public health and medical response system. So Shyla, if you'd go ahead and complete the rest of that presentation. Hi. Um, so next up, we have standardized plans and protocols that we are able to use through a statewide, single statewide public health and medical coalition. Um, this is self-contained um, emergency department in the mobile medical unit. 
Um, as you're seeing it here, it has its own water and electrical sources. It's similarly equipped to a hospital ER and set up. It's designed for eight patients, but we can easily expand it to 16. We also have medical shelters available for use. Um, we have two types of medical shelters that you can see. Uh, patients with more advanced care requirements, we have pre-hospital stabilization and staging units, which are shown in this video. They provide what you would similarly see in advanced life support ambulance service level care. We also, it also has a capacity of 200 people that we can fit for patients. Medical shelters is the secondary type of shelters that we have. That's for those with lower medical needs, such as nursing home patients that um, may need shelter. And these can be set up in buildings or in tents. We also have ambulance buses available for response. We currently have two purpose-built ambulance buses under contract. One is located in Fargo and one is located in Bismarck. Those hold 18 stretcher patients and also they are equipped with the same as an ALS ambulance. We have many different ways that we are able to transport patients in an emergency. Um, originally shown, you saw small vans that we can convert to hold four to six wheelchair patients. We have six school buses converted that can hold roughly 18 wheelchair or stretcher patients. And we also have 18 additional conversion kits that can be used to convert school buses from bus services for patient transport. This, we have contracts available with ambulance services throughout the state. At a moment's notice, we can get roughly 100 ambulance services to respond or ambulances. We also have contracts available with long-term care facilities, and we can get about 60 wheelchair co coaches if needed, similar to what you saw in the video earlier. Next, we have our patient tracking system. This is a statewide triage protocol we use. Uh, it barcodes all patients, vehicles, responders and patient destination to provide visibility to the entire system of patient location. And on the video, you can see it in use where patients are being tagged and tracked as it would on a typical emergency. Also, you can see we have just-in-time training, much like this presentation, we have video conferencing web streaming and video production services. Uh, we produce programs in advance to train responders so that in an emergency, information can be provided at the time of the event. We have our medical reserve, which we have a single statewide medical reserve core uh, it consists of 1,000 members, mostly physicians, nurses, and EMS personnel. They can be paid or volunteer depending on the event. The Department of Health assigns the mission and provides legal liability protection and workers' comp while working in the event. We also have the mechanism to reach out to 16,000 other medical providers in the state if needed and solicit for assistance if that thousand members is not enough for the response. We also have wraparound services to provide daily living needs for staff and people we are serving in the event of a response. These include kitchen, dining, restrooms, sleeping quarters, and laundry. All right, thanks, Shyla. Uh, so any of these assets that you've just seen described are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that process is uh, accomplished uh, by uh, having a variety of staff available within a warehouse setting, variety of staff that are available at a local level 
uh, in the eight largest public health units within the state. There's regional staff that are part of a statewide response team that are available to assist hospitals, uh, clinics, public health units, uh, and then uh, the state staff located here in this office. Uh, one of the communication mechanisms that you're seeing right now up on the, the screen uh, is that when any of the assets that Shyla and Julie were talking about from the state medical cash are requested, that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week through an online ordering process that lets us know even if it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning uh, that a facility needs these assets and then we'll deliver them uh, using a wide variety of transportation mechanisms to get the assets there. Uh, in addition to that, if anyone has a need uh, or just an interest in gathering additional information about this response system, we do have a brochure that's available. It's a booklet uh, that you can access by either calling our office, uh, and that number is 701-328-2270, 701-328-2270, or sending us an email to icwarehouse at nd.gov. That's icwarehouse at nd.gov. And we'd be happy to send uh, this booklet to you uh, so that you can see photographs and descriptions of the types of things that are within this system. Well, it's time now for the question and answer portion of our program. Uh, for those that are viewing by video conference, we're going to ask that you make sure your microphones are muted in your individual conference rooms unless somebody's actually speaking from your room. For webcast participants, please call our toll-free phone number at 855-361-4591. That's 86, I'm sorry, 855-361-4591. Now, when you... Uh, call in, please turn down your computer if you're calling by phone because uh, there's several seconds uh, seconds that are the real-time program is behind the audio, uh, so it'll get confusing if you don't turn down your computer. Uh, when it's time to ask your question, uh, you're going to hear a, a automated voice come on and basically tell you that it's now your turn to ask the question. Your phone's going to be on mute until that actually happens. So you can press star and then pound if you want to ask a question. Uh, when it's your turn, the automated attendant will tell you to go ahead uh, and that you have the floor, that your microphone's unmuted. So that's when you can ask your question. Uh, if you're waiting in queue and you want to withdraw your question, just press star and pound, and that will pull you back out of queue. So again, this would be the time to start uh, dialing the phone if you're viewing by webcast, and go ahead and give us a call at 855 361 4591. Uh, that number will be posted periodically at the lower portion of the screen. Uh, for right now, I'm going to be moving to the video conference sites. And uh, it's not necessary that you strictly adhere to what I'm about to say, but I'm going to keep some organization behind this by going region to region uh, and, uh, and call for the questions or comments that you might be having uh, based on which of the eight largest cities you think that you're closest to. So if you're living that you believe closest to the Fargo area uh, and you want to either post a, a question to us uh, or just uh, make a comment about any of the response systems or even if you have some recommends, recommendations for changes, uh, go ahead and unmute your video conference microphone and uh, go ahead and state that question if you think that you're closest to Fargo. And again, people on webcast, just go ahead and dial into the phone number now. Any comments, questions, uh, or recommended changes from the Fargo area? Not hearing any, let's go ahead and move into the Jamestown area, see if we have any comments, questions, or recommended changes from the Jamestown area. Bismarck is up next. Let's check in with the Dickinson area. Any comments, questions, or recommended changes in the Dickinson area? We'll head on over to the uh, Williston area. Any comments, questions, or recommendations? Minot is next.
Devil's Lake is, uh, is now on. Any questions, comments, or changes there? And the final area is Grand Forks. Any comments, questions, or recommended changes? Again, our phone number if you're on webcast is 855-361-4591. That's 855-361-4591. Uh, we have a number of folks on uh, line that are part of the statewide response team located at the eight largest public health regions. And uh, let me see if anybody would care to add any additional comments uh, from any of the statewide response team, the regional staff located in those eight largest cities. If anybody does have a comment, would you just go ahead and unmute your microphone and, and uh, add your comment or, or observation? All right, nothing there as well. Let me uh, go ahead and then close out the program. Uh, if you do think of a question and you want to make contact back with us or make a comment, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, our phone number uh, that that is our daily phone number uh, is the phone number that I gave earlier for the brochure, and that's 701-328-2270. That's 701-328-2270. Uh, in addition to that, this program will be posted, the video will be posted uh, on our website. And Clint, if you could go ahead and bring that graphic back up again, that's at www.ndhealth.gov forward slash ET. That's www.ndhealth.gov forward slash ET. So when you're in there, you'll see this uh, archived video as well as a number of other training and, and other uh, pieces of video information uh, at that site. I want to thank you for your attendance today. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any comments, questions, or observations, recommended changes. Thank you so much for being here.